Hey, um, today we will be sharing with you on the uh, items, the equipment that I'm using. Okay, so, um, hey, I'll be going through all uh, these items that I normally use. Okay, uh, these are things that, that it's a part and parcel of uh, your uh, the journey for astrophotography. Okay, um, currently I'm using a Canon uh, camera, full frame. So these two lens is my favorite lens currently. And um, the lava lens on the left, basically uh, it's, uh, it's a manual lens. So you will see that there's an uh, aperture ring uh, on the lens. Okay, let me stop sharing for a while. Yeah, I lost my mouse. Okay. okay. So Thanks. for this camera lens, right? If you look at the lens, okay, there's a ring here where you can turn for the aperture size. So because uh, in Astro, basically I do not use any uh, autofocus. So the this lens is very useful for me because I can do manual focus, and as, as you can see. The lens can focus, and there's a so called this um, focusing gauge here, okay, where you can actually use this gauge as a um, uh, focusing. You don't even need to look at the chart of focus, you just look at this gauge here. So basically, if you look at the if you set the aperture to f2.8, okay, then um, anything between infinity, which is the, this infinity, to this. Uh, this one is a concealer meter, three, three, three feet or three meter. Three feet is actually all in focus, which means between this mark until the 2.8 marking here, the distance will be in focus. So basically, this one makes you uh, let you know the hyper focus distance of uh, this lens as well. And um, this lens is quite light. If I compare it to another lens that I'm using, which is um, my this. Uh, 14 mm, you can compare the size. 14 mm is slightly bigger. It's slightly bigger. So, um, weight wise, it's still heavier than the 12 mm uh, Lawa. And it considers to have uh, quite minimum light uh, this, uh, distortion. So, actually, quite like this lens. This lens actually has a uh, mount for uh, different. different uh, camera body. So I have one for Nikon, one for Canon as well. Because I'm still having two body, Canon and Nikon. So I have both lenses system. Okay. So um okay. this this uh, 14 mm Canon right actually also quite a good lens and uh, I actually like it a lot so I won't be I will be using these two lens. Okay. And one more thing about these two lens good thing is that the it's a fixed uh, lens, so it's a uh, prime lens. So which means it's a fixed 12 mm or 14 mm. So it was in astro, right? Normally you try to use the widest angle lens. So there's chances that some, for example, previously I did use before um this uh, 1635 or the 1224, okay, or 15 30 lens. There's, there's chances that you may not set the focal length to the widest. You may extend this set to maybe it's 18 or 20. Because it's so dark, you may not even notice it. Okay, when so end up your photo come out, how come it's not the widest? Okay. So uh so that's why having a prime lens like this one, it makes uh, it easier for you to shoot in the dark where you don't need to worry about the focal length. Fix it on and you have the focal length and set to the aperture that you want and the focusing that you want. So basically uh this this lens, these two lenses is quite is one of my favorite. And this lens yeah. sixteen thirty five, I use it for as well. Okay, um, it's quite uh useful as well. It's very sharp. Okay, then there's Tamron fifteen thirty, I I use it before uh for trial, and only thing this lens is that it's a bit heavy. <laughs> it's a uh, much more bigger than the fourteen and twelve mm, much bigger, so it's heavier. Okay. Can I just yes. interrupt you? 
And uh, to check with you, um, you were actually showing the Lawa lens, right? The yes. 12 mm Lawa lens. Uh, yeah. This is actually a, a lens made by the Chinese. It's a China lens, right? Yes. Ah, okay. How how much is this? Currently, it's not thousand odd. Uh, the last time I I checked out was thousand two from it's New Photo. Okay, yeah, and you can get it from the photo retailers around Singapore, lah, I'm sure. Yes, I think um. Sometimes it may get out of stock, so you may need to pre-order. So right. don't get it just before the trip. Okay. So normally, uh, order in advance because uh, they don't keep stock of this lens. Right. Paul, who is joining us from uh, from Facebook, says that uh, this is actually a good lens. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so good. good. We have some friends from Facebook too. Okay, thank and, you all. Thanks for your comments. Yeah, okay. and, and uh, you see your depth. That uh, Lawa lens has actually the hyperfocal distance, or basically that red line that shows where is infinity, right? So yes, when yes. you when you fix onto that, then generally you won't get a problem because anything from three feet, you are saying like from three feet onwards, uh, they will be sharp. Okay. So yep. uh, how about for the rest of the lenses that you are using, for example, Canon or Nikon or anything else? Uh, do you okay, have okay. That, that line? Nikon, as you, as you see from Canon, they also have. Uh... This uh, you also have this this so called uh gauge here as well on the right. You can see there's mm. also a marking, which is uh, but it's, that it doesn't show the f two point eight, mm. not as as uh, clearly shown in the this uh, lawa lens. So actually, right. uh, so you have to uh, you have to estimate. So basically, normally for this will be very close to the very close to the this uh the center marking. Mm. So you must not move. Too much away from the center marking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But some of the lenses, because of different batch or maybe because of production, um, they are not, that means the line where it's pointing as hyperfocal is not actually the hyperfocal. You will still need to turn back a little bit, for example, right? For some yes, lenses. Some lenses. Yeah. Especially the uh, lenses like this, you won't know, uh, this is actually a lens on the right, you won't know exactly where's the uh, infinity. So you have to uh, try and error, do it. Uh, in the daytime where you can see clearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And same Thanks. for this, uh, this two lens. Sure. Thanks for that tips. Yeah. So yeah. actually, uh, folks, you will have to try out the hyperfocal distance during the day and uh, shoot a daytime subject using this uh, manual focusing method. And then yeah. you can uh, look at the pictures if it's sharp. If it's sharp, uh, in that sense, you can actually use it at night uh, for astrophotography. Yeah. And memorize the position. Sometimes you can even take down the, the, the position. For example, this, if you look at my this lens, let's see if I can show you here. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that actually there's a tip here, which I actually uh, use a couple tip to mark it out <laughs> so that uh, this is the best spot that I, I like. So it will, it will not go away. Okay? Right. So you can tip it down if you, if you need to. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, so let's I also move. used before uh, the Nikon 1424 and this Sigma 1224. Sigma 1224, the time when I bought, mine was a uh, manual lens as well. So it have a focusing ring, uh, this is uh, aperture ring as well. So mine was the old version, this one is a new version. Okay. okay. But uh, one thing difficult to use about this, uh, Bigger lens like the 1224 from Sigma and 1424. Okay, basically, this type of lens you will have difficulty getting filters mm. because the filter needs to be a very big size and it will be co quite costly. And some filter they insert it at the lens uh, mount area, so it's hard to find. So that's why uh, that's why choosing this lens maybe also uh, will have some difficulty getting filter if you want to use filters. Okay, then uh, if you have a crop body, okay, um, this is the lens I used before. It's a Sigma 1020, quite a good lens, it's light and uh, sharp. Um, this lens break into two during my trip two, two years back when I dropped the whole camera body down the Bromo cliffs. Okay, but this lens is a very good lens, it's cheap, less than 1000, like maybe 600 plus to 800 in this range. 
So it's quite a good lens for a crop body. Yeah. Crop body, so, Canon yeah. also have. Yeah. Crop body is basically the APS-C sensor, la, you were saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. And for example, I, will, I use this on my Canon D, uh, 7D Mark II. Mm. Then if you have a Canon that's a 1020 also, you can use that one. Okay. Basically, the main thing is that you buy lens, choose the lens with a, a focusing gauge. Okay. There's a focusing gauge on the, this, uh, this, this uh, lens. So you can know the focusing distance or this. Mm. Okay. Okay, so when after having your lens, okay, you have to decide to get a filter. Okay, basically filters I don't really use it if I were to go to places that's not so light polluted, like Bromo, uh, China, some of the China uh, places like or some places that's not so, not so light polluted. Okay, but in Singapore, if you want to shoot Milky Way, definitely you need a filter. Okay, you either need uh this uh the one on the left this scene uh. Nisi Natural Night Filter, which is a blue color filter. Um, something, the packaging is something like this. Packaging, something like this. Okay, so um, you 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 can uh, use this filter. It's very purplish in color, and normally you are available in this size. Okay, then uh, let me show you the filter. Hey, I for filter wise, I always have a cage, uh, a cover to keep my filter. Okay, so basically, this is how the filter looks like. It's a squarish, okay, purple color. See, okay, this is useful if you're shooting in light polluted area. Okay, then you may also need a ND GND filter. Okay, GND filter basically is a bigger, it's longer. You can see at the Edge here is a smooth uh, transition. It's a smooth transition of the uh, filter. Mm. So this one is useful if you want to shoot um, in Singapore whereby the foreground is too bright. Then you have to put the darker area below and the brighter part on top. So for this filter, definitely you need to have what? Have an adapter. Okay. How the adapter works, basically you must find one that suits your camera lens. So that's why if you were to use the bigger lens, you need a, a, a very big uh, filter holder. Okay. So for this, Lawa comes with its own filter holder. So basically how you do it is like just, just start it through here. So normally I'll do it on from my tripod on. Okay, so let's slide through here. So you will see through your viewfinder and adjust the height of the filter so that the darker area covers your foreground, so it won't be so bright. Okay, so you can adjust up and down just to adjust the, the this height of the filter. Mm. So, and sometimes you can even adjust the angle to like maybe slanted. You can slant it. Okay. So this filter is a uh, holder. It's very important. And, the, and the, this adapter also. Okay, so that's why all this you must take care. So make sure you keep it in a nice cage cover that actually can protect the filter from breaking because it's all glass, so it can break easily. And mm. always have a, a piece of cloth that can clean the filter anytime ready in your box so that actually you don't have to hunt for one when you need one. <laughs> okay, mm. so this is probably what I, I, I do with my filters. So this cage is very hard, it's a hard case. It's from uh, as well. Okay. I bought this from uh, this uh, MS photo, MS color. Mm. Okay. The unfortunate thing is that the set is quite expensive. Uh, uh, no set. choice. <laughs> it's, uh, you have to, investment you have to make if you want to shoot photos, uh, night photos in Singapore. Because Singapore is one of the worst like, polluted country in the world. Mm. But I guess the filter, you can also use it for other purposes like landscape photography, you know, and also other things that if you want to shoot along the way, depending on what filter that you get, right? Yeah, yes, so, yes. so that will be most useful in that sense. Mm. Yeah, so normally I buy this type of uh, square filter rather than those filters that fits into the lens. Because if you buy those that fit into the lens, uh, if you change the lens, you have to buy another adapter. Mm. So this type of filter is that fits to any lens. 
You can just buy the appropriate adapter. You can start it in. Mm. So it save for save some money actually. Right. Yeah. First, yeah. personally, I use the leaf filters. You know, but the leaf filters are very very expensive. Yeah, uh, maybe because they are used by the, uh, you know, uh, also in in video video production, and then uh, because it's a it's a European, it's a UK product. That's why it's more expensive that that way. Yeah, yeah. I think the Nisi is more uh, affordable. But this kind of filters, if you really take care, I think you can use it for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. and mm. and a small a simple tip for those who like to take sunset. The sunset people will use reverse uh, so called uh. Reverse sense filter, reverse GND lah. So basically, the GND reverse set has a darker area on top, and the darker area below. So center is white. So they put two filter together, combine to get one. Mm. So this can save the money to buy the the, the, the more expensive uh, reverse filter. <laughs> That's a good tip. Yeah. So yeah. The, the other thing to take note is that uh, the filters because it's glass, right? Um, for my own personal experience, I also put them in the dry box. You see. Yeah, so remember to keep them well uh, because it's optics. And then if you just keep them outside, uh, there's also a risk of it uh, being uh, infested with, with uh, fungus after some time. So because Singapore yep. is very humid. Yeah, yes, so super please, humid. Yes, so please take note of that and uh, keep your equipment well, okay? So remember to also keep your filters uh, in, in the dry box. Okay. okay, that's why my dry box is just behind me. <laughs> I have three dry box behind. Three box, three box behind. Nice. Okay, so um, come to trigger, right? Yeah, what's, let me see, uh, my trigger cannot. Let me, let me uh, tidy up my, I think I don't know why the trigger doesn't come out. Okay, so I think I've shared this way easier. Folks, if you have any questions so far, you can uh, just key them into the chat box, okay? And then uh, we will take it up and uh, answer them accordingly. Thank you. Okay, so for filter, if you have no question, I'll go ahead to triggers. Okay, trigger, basically there's a filter of triggers. Okay, so this is the very simple trigger that you normally get. It's, like, it's just a, a trigger with a button that press to, to, to trigger your camera shutter and release by letting go, okay? Uh, some equipment can lock. So this is a basic trigger. So why do we need a trigger? Okay, because in Astro, normally we do long exposure. So to prevent your hand from touching the camera, causing any camera shake, typically a trigger will help you reduce this kind of camera shake. So you can get all this uh, wired trigger easily and some even wireless, okay? But for me, I will prefer to use uh, this trigger. Okay, what is the beauty of having this trigger? Okay, let's get this trigger is something like, like this. Okay, the purpose of having this, um, you can use it first thing to do a normal trigger by just pressing and letting, letting go. Okay, and second thing you can do is that you can do a time, you can set the duration according to your time that you want to use rather than the camera body one. Okay, for example, camera body you set to bulk. And you use one to control the timing. So basically, I use one to control how long you want to expose the photo by pressing a button. Okay. So when you press the play, you trigger the, the camera shutter for the duration that you want. Because sometimes, uh, for example, if I were to shoot um, this in uh, Singapore, I want to change the timing. I don't want to touch the camera. So I use this one to control timing. So actually, it helped me uh, without touching the camera also. So basically, this is uh, quite useful. And also, if you want to do star trail, okay, this guy has the feature to actually uh, allows you to to uh, set like to con to shoot how many photos at an uh, interval of maybe one second or three second or five second up to you. You can set all these interval shooting and every shot how many uh, seconds you want to shoot. So, for example, I want to take hundred photos, okay, at thirty seconds per shot, and interval of one second, I can use that to set. Okay, this guy can help you control and trigger for you. So you don't need to stand at the camera and press. Okay, so just set it on, play back, you'll just shoot for you in a continuous manner. Okay, and this one, one battery life normally can last you, I think, one year or two. Okay, and there's a, a lot of choices in the market. 
but I choose to use Photix because it's quite uh, uh, easily available. And this one also, one thing good is that because the cable is separated, which means if you were to change camera system, okay, you could easily just change the cable. The cable only costs $10. So the cable basically just plug into the, this, this, this guy and the other end go to your camera. So different camera system will have different connector like this one. Okay. So that's why with this, you can change the cable by just, if you want to change the camera system. Okay. Then um, for the one I bought recently, I have this uh, wireless remote and this uh, device itself. Basically, I can choose to use the wireless or use wired. So I can have option of both. So it's quite uh, convenient. Okay. So how to use this right? I think a bit uh, tedious to teach today. Maybe uh, I'll try some other time. Then other than using this trigger to do the this time interval um, shooting, we can also use the cameras. Um, some camera have this feature. I'm not sure you can see. There's this feature like we can do a time interval. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so in Canon, uh, yeah. currently most of the camera have this time interval where you can use this one to, to set the timing of the interval you want. Mm. So this manual actually can uh, help you set the settings. Yeah, I think right now for the major brands like Sony and Nikon, they already have it. So uh, it's called intervalometer and then uh, it's basically found in the menu itself. So for, for Nikon and for Sony, you can go into the menu settings and you can find it inside there. Yeah. Okay, so this, this trigger is, uh, can have a lot of functions, so quite useful. And um, I also have some other trigger, like, like uh, something, a lot of different brands, uh, some small trigger like this, okay, whereby they can link to a, a handphone app and you can use handphone to trigger. A lot of uh, different triggers. But one thing no good about this kind of trigger is that um, sometimes if your handphone cannot link to the trigger, then that, that, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And next, um, I'll share with you about the brackets that I use for my camera. Okay. Normally, for you to link your camera to your tripod, you need a, a, a tripod plate. Okay. A plate that links your camera to the camera body, uh, to the tripod. Okay. And this one depends on different camera, uh, this tripod more head that you buy. I like to buy those ball heads that support cast with uh, connection. So basically, this page is generic. Most of the L bracket supports this connection. Okay. So um, why I use L brackets? Okay. L bracket basically a lot of people complain to me is like you add weight to your camera because the L bracket is quite uh, bulky. It add additional weight and uh, we make it bigger. Uh, but I like to use it because if you look at the picture on the right, okay, if you do on the landscape, it's just fine. It's just a normal usual tripod uh, connection. Okay. But if you do a vertical shot, okay, you can just basically turn the camera vertically and mount on the tripod with the same connection. Okay. And why we choose this? Okay, because if you, for example, if you use a ball head that's uh this type, okay, let me show you. If I don't use uh if I don't use the, this particular ball head, your, ball head your, your camera will something become like this if you take a vertical shot. Imagine the ball head is here. The camera will be like that. So basically, it's like you're making your set camera body off-center. The tripod is here, but the camera is off-center. So it become like, sometimes it may be lopsided. It may become not so stable. Okay? And the angle for vertical become limited. Okay. Sometimes it will be obstructed by certain things. So, so that's why I like to use the L bracket so that when you come to a vertical shot, it's much more easier and uh, not so difficult and not so straining on the, this uh, camera body uh, tripod itself. Okay. So that's why this L bracket is useful for me. Uh, so if you want, you can try to look for those light, very small light one. Okay. And it's very useful. Try to find one that fits your camera. Don't get those generic ones that actually 
maybe it doesn't fit your candle well. <laughs> okay, and when you use this L bracket, chances is a lot of time it may get loose. <laughs> okay, so normally I will carry a 10 cent coin with me every time. <laughs> so that whenever it gets loose, I just you know, just go inside there here and just, just turn the, the screw. Because the, the tightening screw normally is like a, a flip head, you can use the coin to, to tighten it. <laughs> So I always use a coin, it's easier to find. Because if you go get a spanner or whatever, it's always very hard to find. So a coin will be easier. Okay, so next, um, normally when you take the time lapse in at night, the chances is that the lens may get fogged. So you need this heat pack to make your lens uh, not to fog so fast. Okay, or don't do it totally don't fog also can. Okay. So basically what this heat pack looks like is uh, I bought my, my last heat pack from this Decathlon. Okay, it's uh, like I think $10 per pack. Okay, but this one expired because I have not covered for one year, this pack expired. <laughs> so what I did, I take it out and try out the heat. Okay. So basically the heat pack is uh, open up something like this. Okay, and normally I choose heat pack with a sticker at the back. Okay, whereby you can actually take out the sticky part. Okay, then I will fix it on the on the camera lens. Okay, you can see over here on the lens. Okay, sometimes one is enough, sometimes I need two. So both top and bottom. Okay, and the trick of using this is not to straight away apply to the camera straight away. Okay, so normally what you do is you just take out the packaging and leave it in your pocket for a while first, so that this guy will heat up okay, a bit first. Okay, when it's heat up, we activated the, the agent inside, then you stick it onto your camera. If you take up from the packaging and straight to your camera, it's a bit useless. Okay, so normally what I do, I just take it out from my pocket, let it heat up first, then I put it on my camera body, uh, the lenses. So this is how I fix it. Okay? So you can, and the things that normally when I do this, I make sure I tape up my, this, uh, lens uh, focusing okay because i don't want the the focusing to be moved when i fix this on to the camera body okay so i use the kafka kafka tape to tape up my this uh, lens okay here, over here so that actually it will move the focusing okay and when you fix it try not to obstruct your this uh, view of the, in the camera so try to make it behind the lens hood okay okay so heat pack, this is quite useful. For me, I buy one pack enough for one trip. Okay? For maybe a five, five day trip, more than enough. So Ping Xiong, normally the heat pack, because of our climate here, we won't need it, right? It's only in yes. cold weather, right? Yep. In cold climate, like for example, if you go to Bromo or to oversee certain cold countries and you're trying to do uh, the Milky Way there, and uh, that's where you have to be careful when you're moving the equipment between the room temperature, maybe in the hotel to outside. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And actually, in Singapore, I use it before as well. Okay. okay. There's a few times when I do time lapse in the park. I went mm -hmm. to this uh, company's connection, park connection, and this uh, Changi Beach, that area. Because at night, it's quite cooling and there's no vegetation. So actually, it starts to fog out. So I need to use this heat pack to cover the lens to prevent from fogging during the time lapse. Right. Okay. Yeah, so even in Singapore, you may also need this heat pack. Mm, okay. Depending on what time you shoot and where you are. Right. Thanks for that tips. I think it will be very useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then if you don't want to buy a heat pack, okay, there's another type of heat strap. This is very popular among those astro photographers who use those long, long lens. Uh, so what they do is that they buy this kind of strap to actually strap around the, this uh, camera body. The, the, the lens. So basically it's just a strap with a well core. Okay. And uh it's a strap with well core. And the other end actually links to uh and links to a power bank. Okay, so you can use the power bank to power this heat strap. And there's a uh, control to control the intensity of the of the heat. Okay. So if you use this, make sure you bring along two to three power bank. Mm. Okay, so that at least you can last for a whole night. Okay, so this is quite useful because it's very easy to use. You just need to strike around your camera body, the, 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 the lens. Okay, let me share the, the photo again. 
where can you buy the heat strap? Uh, actually, this one, I, my friend helped me buy it because the uh, two items, we, we bought three items together. We buy four of these together so to save on the delivery. We bought it from Amazon. Mm. Yeah. So you go Amazon, Google for this uh, heat strap. Basically, you will get a lot of uh, heats on this one. There are a lot of different brands, so you can choose one that is useful. Right. Yeah. So normally when I use this one, same thing. I focus my lens, then I use a sticker to mark a reference to make sure that, that whenever I adjust put some on, I won't touch my focusing ring. Mm. That's why all these things must be careful when you're fixing uh, all those uh, things on the camera lens. It may tuck, it may move your this uh, focusing ring. So make sure I mark it before I actually uh, fix it on. And so that you won't uh, touch your focusing as well. Okay. Okay. And <clears throat> okay, so this is a heat strap which is quite useful. Okay. Normally I try before one power bank of uh, 10,000 amp per hour, I think, can last quite long. Okay. Those big powerful ones. Uh. Okay. Then next, let me share with you on the tripod head that I use. Okay. Currently, this is the two head that I use. Okay. They basically, they are, they are called gear head. Okay. Gear ball head. The typical ball head that normally people buy is those that I showed just now, which is uh, the ball. Okay. So basically, what this type of uh, ball head does is that once you release the button, the, the, the knob, okay, the thing goes free flow. Okay. Sometimes in Astro, because it's the dark, foreground is so dark, I can't really see. So I, I got to compose first. Okay. Then I want to adjust a bit. So if I adjust a bit, I just like it's loosened, like, the whole thing gone again. So I need to readjust again. So it makes it very frustrating to uh, adjust. So what I did is that, um, just one of my friends who actually like to take use the tilt shift lens, he used this gear ball head and I find it quite useful. Because what it does is that this one has three knobs. One knob here, one knob here, and uh, one, one, one gear here. Okay? One knob here. Okay? So basically what some does is that one knob will control the, this uh, angle. Okay? Basically it control whether you will go up and down and one knob to control the side. Okay, so this guy will actually control whether it go this way or this way. This way or this way. Okay, there's a quick release also. There's also a geared one. Okay, so you can do a quick release and just move separately. Okay, so there's a, um, you can do a quick release or you can lock it and use the gear. So it's very easy to use. So I like this, okay. Currently I have two different brands. One is from Sunway Photo, the other one is from Lee Photo. Okay. Lee Photo basically is uh, this brand. Okay. It can take up to a um, weight of 690 gram. No, maximum load of 20 kilogram. It can take up to a load of 20 kilogram. So it's quite a good ball head. Okay. So currently these two brands is available in the market. Because this ball head is quite difficult to find uh, in the market as well. And the board, the leaf photo I took, I ordered and it came in, I think after two or three weeks. Okay. It's quite new. And some photo I've actually sent for repair once before. So uh, I have both. Currently I both I, I have at least three tripods. So I use it one on each tripod. Okay. And for tripod, okay. Let me show you this 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 pouch. Okay. You can see that I cover my ball head with a pouch, okay? Because this part is very important, always protect it, okay? So I cover it with sun, so that even if it drop off, uh, get loose and drop off my, this uh, tripod, it will not fall off because this side is attached to the tripod. So basically you still hang on to the tripod. So this one is useful. So what is this, this pouch? This pouch you can buy any uh, adventure shop. This is actually a rock climber's pouch for putting the chalk. They put a chalk powder in the pouch here. Mm -hmm. So basically, you find one that's big enough to cover your forehead. Okay, and this one also serves as a pouch for you when you're shooting uh, time lapse. For example, I was shooting with my this uh, trigger on my camera. So when I do the timer, I don't hang it around, right? So I put it in the pouch, so you can hang it around here. So you won't have too many things hanging around your camera. So you can put a lot of accessories during shooting here. 
anything that attached to the camera plate here. So it won't get it won't get lost or won't get anywhere, dang anywhere. So it's quite useful. So you can have two purposes. One is to protect your ball head when you're trying to transit. One is to for you to put in anything that you're shooting. Okay. So okay. Anything about question about this uh, ball head? So Pingxiong, for the ball head, right? Um other than astrophotography, are there any other genre of photography that you can use this gear ball head for? Um, okay, for this gear ball head, right? If you are doing, if you are using the, for example, taking landscape with tilt shift lens, this mm. is very useful because it can shift the angle at a very nice, um, equal manner. Right. Yeah, because yeah. it's a very precise kind of adjusting for for the scene, right? And yes. I I think that is also very good for macro. Yeah, so you can also use it for macro photography, for example, or product product photography. Yeah, you can yeah. just do minor adjustment. Mm. You can fix on tripod and do minor adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, but but it's not easy to find. So you actually bought it locally from one of the photo retailers. Okay, there's two shops that I bought from. Uh, one is uh, Oran Photo in Sydney Square. Okay. The Lee Photo, I, Lee Photo I bought I bought from from them. Sun Photo I bought from uh, TK Photo in uh, this Plaza Sing. Plaza Singapore. Uh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So these two shops sell one brand each. Mm, okay. So for, for those folks who are interested to uh, find this out, you know, these are the two retailers that you can uh, go to look out for whatever that you prefer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then the okay. tripod wise, basically my tripod I'm using is a very old tripod. You can see the model there. I don't think it's on sales anymore. It's very heavy and bulky. Okay. Why is heavy and bulky? Because I want my camera to be uh, steady. Because when it's heavy and bulky, it's very steady on. It, mm. Even if wind blow, it won't shake so much. Okay, so this tripod is with me for more than ten years. I think I bought a second-hand tripod for hundred plus, and I use it for ten years. It's quite lasting. Okay, tripod basically the the trick of having a tripod is that you must find a tripod that can uh, have a height that's tall enough for you. Okay, when it's fully extended, it's taller than you. Okay, so you see the maximum height for this one is 175, 76 meter. So basically it's uh okay, I don't want to look at the maximum height is 135 meter, 1.35 meter. Okay, so basically it's uh it's tall enough for me. But some places you need to have height as well. And tripod when you choose right, normally I choose choose tripod with uh, three sections only, which means the number of sections that you can have is actually three sections. You won't have more than three. Okay. Uh, you can see from here, leg section equals to three. So those with four sections, basically they can go uh, shorter when it's collapsed, fully collapsed. With a less section, means that after it collapsed, it's still very long. Okay. So it becomes very bulky. Okay. But despite the bulky, because if you look at the section right, normally when the Extend the tripod. Okay, the last section is always have thinner slate. Okay, mm -hmm. so with a thinner leg, what does it mean? It means that it's not so stable. So if you are doing night photography, you need to have long exposure. Steady is very important. Okay, steady is very important. So you must make sure the tripod is steady. So that's why the, the thicker the leg better. So if you want, you can get uh, maybe Kiso. Kiso they have uh, graphite uh, tripod which is good as well, but it's more expensive than this one that I'm using. So only 100 plus, a Gizzo can cost you maybe 1000 plus or two. Mm. Yeah. So, and I choose to use tripod with a clip because I find the clip one is easier to use. Okay. I don't like those that they twist on, I always spend too much time twisting it. Okay, so the clip one is easier. So basically I have two tripods, one longer and one shorter. So depending on the trip I'm going, so I choose the length that I want. Or sometimes I bring both. Okay? So I bring both tripod as well. So I prefer the clip one. And clip one maybe basically is easier to maintain. So when the, the clip gets loose, there's a spanner and you can just use it to tighten it. Okay? So it's very easy to use. And what else on tripod? Okay, tripod, if you want, you may, can, may even buy a strap to hang on to tripod so you can sling it. Okay? So normally I don't carry the tripod case. I keep the tripod case at home or even throw away. So uh, another thing is that to save the weight, right? To notice my, my this tripod do not have a center column. There's no center column here. I only I take out a center column. Okay, first thing is that I don't use it at all. So since I don't use it, why for I leave it there? So I remove it to save weight. 
Okay, to the center column, right? If you extend it out, what it become? It become a monopod on top of a tripod, mm. so it become not stable. So normally I don't use my center column. Okay, so that's why uh, I whenever I shoot, I try not, I try to minimize. I don't use the center column because it makes the tripod become a monopod. So it's actually uh, better if, if when, when, for example, if we are buying a tripod, we try to get one without extending the center column and it's also at our, at our height. That means that we yes. can actually see it at our eye level, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. True. Yeah. So it's very important to choose one with a appropriate height. Yeah. Okay. So it's good Sometimes, to have support, support of three legs rather than one leg. La, because when you extend out, it's just one leg, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can't monopod on top of a tri on, on tripod. Right. So if the wind blow, the tripod will just move. Mm. And another thing is that if your tripod is, uh, first, if you wind very strong, some tripod have a hook at the bottom of the, this, uh, have a hook at the bottom of this column. Okay. So what you can do, you could actually hang your back, camera back, onto that hook but the thing is that make sure your back is not hanging in the air it must be touching the ground so that it's pulling the tripod down to the ground mm -hmm. okay if you let the back hang in the air means that the, the, when the wind blows the, the back move the tripod also will move mm -hmm. okay so make sure your, your your weight is actually touching the ground yeah or you use the strap to tie it to the legs and then make, making sure the back doesn't move at all Yep. Mm. Yeah. So it's very important to have a stage right? But otherwise you will have uh, tricky pictures. Yeah. So folks, please remember this golden tips huh? because it's only when you are out there shooting and uh, it all tells from experience. Uh, you wouldn't want to actually shoot the photos then you come back then you realize that there's actually movement in your pictures. Then yep. uh, it's You'll kind of... <laughs> yeah. You know, and the trick will not be worth it after that. Okay. Because you won't notice until you zoom in and see. Mm, mm, that's yeah. very true. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, the next level of uh, extra right, basically is to experience using trackers. Okay. Trackers is something that is uh, more difficult, challenging to use, okay, but it's quite fun. Okay. Basically, tracker is, is a, something, a device, something like this. What it does is that it will rotate this mount here. Okay according to the speed of the movement of the earth. Okay, so you must set your, where you are, in the North Hemisphere or South Hemisphere. Because in the North Hemisphere, it rotates this way. In the South Hemisphere, it rotates the other way. Mm. Okay, so this is how to counter the, this movement of the earth. Okay, and what is the purpose of this? Basically, for this is to allow you to expose the picture with a longer exposure. So you can capture more details of the stars uh, in the Milky Way. And how normally this is deployed is something like this. So you can see that to deploy this is very complicated. You have to mount a ball head here, put the camera on over here. And sometimes your camera is so big, it may obstruct and hit uh, this, 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 this device. So to set up this device, if you are experienced, you can set up within less than half an hour. If you are inexperienced, you can take hours to set up, so you won't get it right. Because the first thing to do is that you must first level the device first, make it level, tripod and the tripod level, after tripod level, then you level this, this, this device. Then you have to adjust the an angle and point to the north. Must point to the north. Okay. So if your Mercury is on the south, then you point to the north, then you have to point the angle camera backwards. So it's very, very, very funny angle. Okay. So that's why uh, to deploy this, sometimes need to have a modification. In some places, they sell a modification whereby they build a, a ball head that is extended out. Uh, something amount extended out of this uh, adapter here um, to fix your camera. Okay. I own this tracker for a few years before I saw it away last year. I think last year, okay. But before that, actually, I managed to get to shoot something like this. Let me show you some uh, one of the photo that I shoot with the the tracker. Okay, this is a series of time lapse taken with the tracker. You can see the timing here is hundred hundred and forty seven seconds, so it's close to a few minutes. Okay, and 
you can see that the pictures from here, you can see the foreground is moving. Every shot, the foreground is moving. Uh, but the Milky Way is actually fixed at one angle. Yeah. Ying Xiong, uh, yes. I can't see the picture actually. I can't see. Uh. Yeah. Let me see. Uh. I reshare again. Let me see. Uh. Okay. I think the sharing is wrong. Can you see now? Oh uh, yes, we can okay. see. Yeah. So this is the the uh, picture taken by the tractors. So you can see from the series here, the timing for exposure is around 147 seconds. Okay. So you can see every shot, right? The foreground is moving downwards, which means the cap the, the tractor is moving this way. So, so see what's, the, the uh, what's the benefit of using a tracker versus the conventional method? Why would As you can you see, use tracker, a tracker, right, it mm. tries to counter the movement of the earth. So it can expose with a longer exposure. And with a longer exposure, it can have, have a lower ISO. And you can have more details. Right. Without any trail. And you can see that the image is still sharp. Mm with 147 seconds. Because if in the previous session I mentioned before, to capture a Milky Way shot, you have to use the 500 rules to calculate the exposure based on your focal length. So basically, uh, even with the widest angle, the maximum you can go is 40 seconds. Mm. Okay? So 40 seconds, sometimes it's not enough for the exposure. So that's why you have a longer exposure can go for lower ISO. So generally speaking, irregardless of what lenses you are using in terms of wide angle for astrophotography, uh, your timing won't, uh, it's not recommended to go past 40 seconds because or else then you'll be getting more like a trail rather than yes. yeah, just the, the stars itself, right? Mm. Yes, you have a trail. So that's why it's important to, to have a lot of exposure. But right. to overcome that, you have to use a tracker. Mm. Okay. But the problem with tracker is that you can see the foreground is moving in every shot. Mm. And you can see the foreground is blur. It's a blur. Right. Okay. So, that's, so, so that's why for tracker, you need to do a lot of editing. So mm. you have to get on shot with a clear foreground first. Mm. So I have a starting, starting shot, I have a very clear foreground. Okay. Then uh, what I do, then I use Photoshop. <laughs> edit the photo to, to give you this shot. So this is basically after editing. With, to do this, you need to spend a lot of time defining the edge. Okay, cut off the edge. Of this. So it's a very time-consuming photo. But right. it gives you a very uh, fulfilling result mm. with a tractor. Because of the quality that you can get off the Milky Way, right? And then it's, the, 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 it's more detailed. And um, the, <clears throat> the shot looks better in that sense. Okay. Yes. So you get more, you get more details. Mm, so the thing is that uh, that means the important thing of using a tracker is that you have to shoot one shot of the foreground first in shot focus, and then you use the tracker, and then later you merge the two together in Photoshop. Yes. Mm. So this is the the, 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 the the first shot. Then I choose this last shot because it got a detail. Right. I did. Hmm. So the, the steps to get this one is very time consuming, but mm -hmm. it's very nice. I, I actually I like this photo a lot. Sure. So so Peng Xiong, uh, we have a question from SE. SE is uh, actually asking, is the tracker then more useful for time lapse? Um, it's not really for time lapse purpose. But time lapse basically you want to do star trail, or you want to do uh, time lapse video that we see in the beginning of the of, of this session. Mm. So. Basically, tracker don't you don't use it for a time lapse. You most you most of people use a slider for time lapse, mm. whereby you can move the whole picture in a very regular manner. Okay. Right. Okay. Hope that answer your question, SE. Yeah. And this tracker so far is the most affordable in the market because um, uh, there's other tracker that you can buy in the market. It's more expensive. And right. this is the most affordable and smallest, like this easiest, easiest to set up. And how much is this? How much is this? Uh, um, 
Okay, you still remember? <laughs> I think, if I'm not wrong, it's between four to 700. Right? Four to 700. It may be more now uh, after so many years. <laughs> I'm not sure. The price is quite okay. Right. Uh, yeah. You can just go Google for this brand. Mm. You can find the price in Amazon. Right. And sometimes you can sell for directly from this, this company as well. They, they ship to you. Right. And this one is not just a tracker. You need to buy the compass. The compass will fit on top of the, this horseshoe here. Mm. And you must buy also um, what else. If you want, you can buy the scope also. There's one scope that can actually help you find the north. Mm. So there's a few accessories to buy with this one. Yeah. But it's perfectly all right not to have the tracker, right? I mean, it's more for advanced uh, astrophotography. Yeah. You know, when you're starting off, uh, I, I guess the basic uh, uh, basic equipment will do as long as you have a wide angle, a good tripod, you know, uh, with, with a camera. So even if you're using a DSLR or mirrorless, uh, that would do, right? So, but yes. uh, have you, have anybody done this on uh, handphone, you know? Because a lot of people also using handphone nowadays, right? So have you encountered anyone doing astrophotography on handphone? I myself, I've used my Huawei mm -hmm. Mate 20 Pro to capture the Milky Way with the handphone. Yes, it can be done. Mm. And okay. if you use a handphone, uh, you may need to get something like this type of uh, small tripod for your, this uh, cam pod for your, this uh, handphone. Mm. So normally I have a clamp here that clamps my tripod. Right. And I have an arm that can mount my phone to the, this uh, tripod. Mm. Okay. So with that, you can actually set the long exposure. Sure. So the thing about using handphone to do astro is the trick of focusing. Because it's not so easy to focus with the handphone. Mm -hmm. But they use a slider. So uh, sometimes a very small, minor sliding maybe affects the focusing. Right. Okay. But um, it does give you a nice photo. Mm. I have it on my Instagram actually. I post it there. I see. Okay. So maybe when the, uh, when we can all get to travel again and then uh, on your next trip, the Romo, you know, you and your participants can actually also try that out uh, with with the uh, handphone or maybe even Mersing, you know, or Thailand or anywhere that you go after uh, we are all allowed to travel once again. Yes. Mm. The okay. main thing about handphone is that your handphone must be uh, able to do manual settings. Like mm. setting the aperture, setting the focusing, mm. and setting the duration mm. and ISO. So you must be able to control all these settings. Sure. So currently, I've tried um, Huawei, uh, Mate 20, Mate 10, all these all, all can set. Okay. Then I think uh, we know at least the uh, we know also can do Oppo. Oppo also can. Mm. So it's not using the Huawei night mode to shoot, right? <laughs> um, no, not the night mode. Yeah. Not, okay. Because night mode, maybe you can try. But uh, I so far use the manual mode to, to try setting myself. Yeah. And I get good results. So I'm quite happy with it. But of course, to get the best result, is still using a camera will be better. A DSLR or a mirrorless. I think that's where you get the most optimum result, right? Yes. Mm, okay, but I, I always try both, uh. right? So as as you is also uh, asking, you know, is uh, the foreground blur due to the tracker following the Milky Way, or just a difference in focal length distance? Okay, uh, it's blur because the this tracker is moving, mm. okay, and it's moving during the hundred and forty seven seconds exposure. Mm. So anything move within this timing it will cause the foreground to be blur. Mm. And the sky is not blur because the tracker is moving together with the, the, the star's mm. motion. So that's why tracking the stars, the stars yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's tracking the stars. But then because it's not tracking the stationary uh, uh, landscape that is in front of it, that's why yes. you could actually see that, that blur, the shift a yeah. little bit in focus. Yeah. Because you can't track both at the same mm. time. Because mm. they are moving the different direction. Mm. You are right. Uh, I, I mean, that's the reason why you have to do two shots. Like you have to do one first with the foreground that is sharp, right? Yeah, so that's the one that you will stack on top uh, in the final picture. So that, that, that shot is sharp. And then you let the tracker do its work by following the, the, the stars, right? Mm. Yes. And if okay. you go into this kind of object in Astro, you can't even use this tracker. You must get an uh, uh, equatorial mount 
mm. okay, which I don't, I don't, I'm not covering here. Mm. Uh, Equatorial mouth and link it to a computer to track it. Right. And that one is even more advanced astrophotography. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. And anything else that you like to uh, cover in here? Yeah. What's others about uh, Peng Xiong? Uh, okay. Basically, main thing is that you make sure you have uh, the. Well, after you think of a while, you roughly know what is missing, what you need. Uh, for example, if the lens tends to fog, make sure you have a piece of cloth that she can absorb water mm -hmm. to clean up the lens before it fog. Then uh, always have a casing okay, that's durable to hold your memory cards. Okay? So basically, I have a, a pill box like that to hold all my memory cards. Okay? So I can organize the card such that which is used before, which is not used before. Mm. Okay? Maybe by facing like, for example, to face this way out is to show that it's not used and face the other way out is to show that it's used. So this is how I organize my memory card in my box. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what else? I think based, uh, gaffer tape. Gaffer tape is very important. Okay, because gaffer tape is a quick fix for a lot of things. I use it to tape my focusing ring so it will move. Or sometimes that anything break, I use the gaffer tape to tape it up as well. Mm. So a small roll of gaffer tape is very useful. Right. Okay. And uh, the 10 cent coin that I mentioned just now, okay, <laughs> it's very useful when you want to tighten your this, uh, this uh, tripod plate to your camera. Yeah, that's true. So with the L bracket, it's actually also quite a good thing because it's always mounted on the camera. You know, uh, there are people who, who get on the trip, you know, uh, and then you, you bring along the tripod and then you forget your, your tripod plate. You know the the quick release plate, and then you go there. You can't actually use the tripod anymore because the plate is not with you. With a with a L bracket, then you actually have it mounted. You know, and uh, yeah. that yeah. So once you go there, you travel with your tripod without the plate. That's still all right. Yeah, yeah. That's mm. why whenever on my trip, I always carry around uh extra tripod plate. Okay, sure. for this one, because mm. an extra ball. Yes, this one is very common. You can use it on any camera. Yes. And the tripod, if you use is the common tripod like Akka Safe Mount, yeah. then it's very easy to borrow from someone. Mm. I can lend you. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Are there any more questions from our friends here today? Yeah. Thank you for spending your precious Sunday with us and uh, coming in for this session. Yeah. So are there any more questions? We are going to give about 20 seconds before we end the session. Yeah, we are uh, we just overrun a little bit, yeah, like four, mi four minutes into time. So we just want to make sure that everyone is happy with what we have discussed today and hope that has also given uh, you a lot of valuable tips that you can uh, use in your astrophotography. Because I think all of us is like uh, building up our bullets, right? And uh, waiting for the day where we can all travel again. And uh, while you are here, you can still okay, actually go out for, for astrophotography in Singapore, provided the weather is fine. So uh, remember that uh, there are also many apps that can help you uh, to find the best time or the, the, the best uh, situation to go out. And do also uh, read more about our rec uh, or, or see our recording that we have uh, in the past sessions where Ping Xiong has shared a lot. Uh, especially about astrophotography in Singapore too and also for overseas, yeah? So I hope the, if you are really interested in astrophotography uh, and when the opportunity allows, please remember to join us on one of these trips. I'm sure you'll be really, really uh, happy with the results that you get back from it and Ping Xiong will be around to also guide you along. Yeah, uh, so, so that will hopefully will be a good thing, okay, for everyone. Yeah, so um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, all the all your participation today. And thank you, Feng Xiong, for uh, giving all the uncensored tips because, uh, you know, for people to search on the internet, you actually need to look at a lot, a lot of articles to find all this information out. And uh, for, for you to come by today and so uh, unselfishly sharing all these tips, uh, we, we are really appreciative of that. Yeah, so we'll look forward to your next session also on the popular apps that's going to be used for astrophotography. So please stay tuned and join us then, okay? Yeah, so with that, uh, I'd like to wish everyone a wonderful week ahead. Yeah, and uh, uh, we'll see you next Sunday again. Same time, same channel, same place, okay? Yeah, see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you, Peng Xiong.